everybody, it's Gina Mizell alongside Danny Moran. We are inside Oregon State's indoor facility. Family Fun Day is going on at Research Stadium, but first we had a scrimmage, and uh, Oregon State now two weeks away from the season opener. And a big announcement after the scrimmage that Seth Collins and Marcus McMarion will both play in the first game, possibly the second and third game. So this quarterback battle isn't necessarily settled, but at least we have some answers as far as what this team's gonna do moving forward. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's that unexpected. I mean, I think maybe that an announcement came today about that was maybe a little bit surprising. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how, how you took it, but I mean, even going back to uh, media day when it was Nick Mitchell and Seth Collins in the group, I mean, he, Gary Anderson referred to them as 1A and 1B. So, I mean, there wasn't anything specific about playing both, but it didn't seem like they were ever necessarily against that idea. And uh, he alluded to Northwestern, who's had some success. He said he's talked with Pat Fitzgerald about playing two quarterbacks. So it seems like he's something that, you know, prepared to have success with. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Gary Anderson did mention at Pac-12 Media Days that, hey, we're not, we're not opposed to playing two quarterbacks. So again, both, both Seth Collins and Marcus McMarion ran the first team offense, ran the second team offense. We never saw any one versus one or two versus two today, but it was a little bit of what we've seen this whole time, sort of a good drive and then also a good drive and so the fact that neither one of them has separated themselves I think people who were watching today saw it on the field. Yeah was there anything else that stood out to you I mean Jordan Villeman was yeah. one guy who had a big day you got to talk to him a little bit how did he sound about just the whole day how it went in general? Yeah he was excited I mean he's been kind of dinged up through a lot of camp but had two really long catches today a good catch and run from Seth Collins where he slipped a tackle and then stiff armed a guy and he, he said he should have scored if it would have been a game he would have probably dove or tried to a little bit harder to score but he was yeah. catching some grief from his teammates about <laughs> not scoring on the <laughs> sidelines. Exactly sure. yeah. he had, so he had a good day Chris Brown had a good day um, and he, his story coming back from his injury is a positive development in camp but um, again overall uh, Gary Anderson's the offense is coming along, but I think we've still seen that it has, has some ways to go. What stood out to you? Just to have that many guys back on the field. I mean, mm -hmm. you were here last week when, I mean, there was no Storm Woods, there was no Victor Bolden, no Jordan Villeman. Mm -hmm. So to see this team, because I mean, during practice, this was the, you know, two days this whole week, we were only here twice for availability and you get to see a very limited sample size, just to see a little bit more of how those guys were all functioning uh, as a unit. And now going forward with that quarterback information, uh, it'll be an interesting next two weeks leading up to Weber State. Absolutely. Well, Beavers are off tomorrow. Monday is a two-a-day, no media availability, so the next time you will hear from us as far as an immediate practice update will be on Tuesday. So stick with us. Until then, for Danny Moran, I'm Gina Mizell coming at you from Corvallis. We will catch you next time.